I refuse to believe in things that take my power away from me. The most famous things people attack me for is their little quote is they say, you said depression isn't real. You're a man, you're allowed to just cry all the time and have no emotional control, no stoicism. I was most powerful when I was sad, when I was depressed, when all these things. I think the most dangerous men on earth are the weak men. I think inside of every single man, we're born with a fire inside of us that we do not control can destroy ourselves and other people. And if you look at men who have no emotional control, because that's what they're trying to teach us to have. They're saying, listen, you're a man, you're allowed to just cry all the time and have no emotional control, no stoicism, just be, come, react to your emotions. Do you know what happens when you tell men to just react to their emotions? Anger. You have school shootings, you have rape, you have violence. That's what happens when you tell men to have no emotional control. These school shooters are kids with no emotional control. Rapists are men with no emotional control. Violence in the, you see on the street are men with no emotional control. Telling men to not be stoic is gonna create a, a breed of violent young men who have no emotional control, can't control their emotions and act out on them. That is absolutely not only more dangerous to society than me coming along saying, listen, I don't give a how you feel, young man. It doesn't matter how you feel. You have duties and you have responsibilities as an adult and you must comply and act a certain way regardless of how you feel. That is better for society as a whole, especially as I'm only teaching the tenants of, listen, go to the gym anyway. Doesn't matter, you don't feel like it, go anyway. Listen, your girlfriend left you, your heart's broken. You're not allowed to stalk her, she doesn't want you. Get the f over it. What I'm saying is good for the world. They're saying, no, yeah. act out to your emotions. Cool, you're creating stalkers, rapists, and school shooters. These people are dangerous. So emotions are feedback, but stoicism is the ability to process them. And that's what you need to be le learn as a man. You're never gonna be able to turn them off. You're gonna feel them. You have to learn how to turn, you have to learn how to process them and turn them into a positive. It's energy, it's unlimited energy. The best thing about being a man, the best thing about being a man is you get to build your character from the ground up. You're not born with any value. You're born as a blank slate. I decided I wanted to be a big toting, kickboxing, Bugatti driving bad boy. I did it all myself. You get to choose you wanna be a musician and be sensitive and play guitar and get them that and be, and be important that way. You get to choose you wanna go get in the cage, you kick the out of somebody. You get to be, choose to be anything you want, but you have to go and do it. It's gonna be difficult because it's competitive, but that's the beauty of being a man, the blank slate. And I inspire men to look at themselves as a blank slate and go, you know what? I ain't now, but I can become anything I want. How could I possibly give up on myself? I say this all the time. I say the best things that ever happened to me are the worst things that ever happened to me. All the trauma and I've been through in my life are the best things that ever happened to me. Because as a man, if you've not had a difficult life, you cannot be good at being a man. Being a good man and being good at being a man, they're two slightly different things. But to be good at being a man, you need to be have been through so much. You're never gonna be capable as a man if you've not had trauma. The best men ever have had trauma. If you call a police officer, you need a brave police officer. He ain't gonna be brave unless he's been through shit. Yeah. He's not gonna be brave unless he's been through shit. The true society, the true women with the brain, they actually, I want a man who's strong, who's supportive, who's intelligent, who financially provides, etc. Then you're gonna want a man to some degree who's been through some shit. Yeah. And a man who's internalized it and used it as a weapon. And this is what I say to people. People email me their long lists of all the bad things that happened to them, and I reply, fantastic. You are so lucky. You have all the building blocks to become the exact kind of man you want to be. If none of this shit happened to you, when something else bad happens to you later, you wouldn't be able to deal with it. Fantastic. And he goes, no, but you know, this, this. He replied again with more excuses. I said, why are you making excuses? I just told you what happened to you is a good thing. You need to reframe your mind. Bad things happen to Batman. They killed his parents. Do you understand? That's why he's Batman. You've just told me you have the building blocks to become the most, you might become top G when I retire. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> what are you complaining about? He goes, well, what do I do? I said, you need to work. Take all that trauma. If you're truly heartbroken, my friend, and we've all been there as men, if you're truly heartbroken, you can't sleep. That means you're gonna get in fantastic yes. shape. You better hit the gym. You have nothing else to do. But stop watching YouTube. Stop emailing me. I want pictures of you in the gym. Get the f to work. Heartbreak's a fantastic motivator, as is depression, as is sadness. Great. Look at what's pissing you off and make sure it never happens again. If you were jacked and rich as f you probably wouldn't have left your ass. So get your shit together. Right? So this is so important. Trauma is such an important part of being a man. And, and the matrix talks of trying to say that trauma is terrible and avoid trauma, or if you get trauma, take a pill, and, and, and that's unrealistic. Trauma is going to happen to you, and you, you as a man need to internalize it, accept it, and weaponize it to become the best version of yourself you can be. And that requires mental strength and stoicism. It does not require, oh, and be more emotional. If you're more emotional, you're going to fall apart when shit happens. Chess is a fantastic game because in the game of chess, there's no, mis there's no luck. If you lose, 
no matter how well you play, if you lose, at some point you made a mistake. Mm. Even if it's the most minor mistake, you made a mistake. So you learn to understand that no matter what happens to you, if you lose a scenario, you made a mistake. Maybe it's a tiny one, maybe it was two years ago, whatever, but you made a mistake and you learn absolute and utter accountability for yourself. And that mentality is extremely powerful to apply to all things in life. And this is the thing, this is why what I was saying when people say, you don't know you don't know how it feels to be depressed. I say, yes, I do. The difference is how it's analyzed. I always argue this two ways as well when depressed people come to me, because one of my most famous things people attack me for is their little quote is they say, you said depression isn't real. I didn't say depression isn't real. I said, feeling depressed is real. But the idea that depression is gonna strike you in your mind and there's nothing you can do about it, I think that is promoting helplessness amongst depressed people and that's the reason they kill themselves. I don't think that making people helpless in an unfortunate Ooh. situation is the great thing to do. You have to give people hope. And I explain that when you believe in something, you give it power. So I tried to say that when I felt at my lowest and I achieved the most I've ever achieved in my life, the reason I was capable of doing that is because I didn't believe in the paradigm of being a depressed person. I just believed that this is how I currently feel and fuck it, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to get my life to be better. And I gave a very simple example, an analogy. I said, if you take two people, one believes in ghosts and one doesn't, and you put them both in haunted houses, and in the middle of the night, there's a bang. <laughs> the person who believes in ghosts is now terrified. There's a ghost, they're calling an exorcist, they're panicking in the room, they're hiding. The person who doesn't believe in ghosts goes wind, and goes back to sleep. It's the same noise, it's the same scenario, but it's the belief That's both. in their mind yeah. that terror and ruins their life. Yeah. It's the belief in their mind yeah. that turns against them. And I've said this many times, I don't even give a shit about right and wrong. You can tell me depression's, you can give it to me with every scientific proof in the world, depression, but I refuse to believe in things that take my power away from me. I only, I'm only gonna construct a mental model that allows me to be as powerful as possible. If believing in the idea of depression is gonna take my own power away, then I won't believe in it. I don't wanna believe in things that make me weak. I believe in things that make me strong. And someone goes, well, you're wrong. Listen, let's assume, let's assume you're correct and that makes me wrong. Let's say that you're right and you're depressed. Why would I want to adopt the thinking of a man who is sad? Why would I wanna think like you? Wouldn't it better to be wrong and be happy and have a sports car and a yacht and a, and a private jet? You want to talk about right? Look at your life. My, I, don't talk about right and wrong. Let's talk about success and results. Yeah. I don't believe in things that take power. I never have. So when people email me and they start saying, I'm depressed, I'm depressed, I'm depressed. And what's funny is this, I talk to them and they desperately defend the idea of depression. I'm like, my friend, you just told me you're too depressed to be successful and depression has destroyed your life and you lost your girl. I'm telling you that enemy, the enemy in your life isn't real. And you're now sending me 10 emails a week trying to convince me that your enemy is a real thing. Why are you sticking up for your enemy? This person, whatever it is, this idea destroyed you and you're putting your energy into defending it. You should be on my team. Whose team are you on here? You want to sit here and convince me? I'm never going to believe you. I'm never going to adopt your thinking because your life is not yeah. successful enough for me to emulate. So why don't you try to adopt my way of thinking? Stop defending this. And they're defending it because it's a cure-all excuse. Depression or sadness is a cure-all excuse for men to use for failure. I have failed. This is why they say I don't believe in men's mental health. Or the man, the man who's depressed can't compete with the man who's not depressed. This, this quote. I say, listen, you get to roll out be fat, be out of shape, be broke, be unimportant with no girlfriend. And instead of the world thinking you're a loser, you get to say, I'm not a loser, I'm depressed. It's a shield. Yeah. And I say, that's why you don't want to lose your shield. Because now you have accountability. Now you have performance to cop out. F it off. I don't give a shit if it's real or not. We're not about that. We're talking about success here. Get rid of your excuses. Stop defending the thing that's ruined your life and get to f work. And every time anyone has ever listened to me in history, ever, Every single one of them's transformed their lives and messaged me positive messages afterwards. Every single time. That's why I'm I'm anti antidepressant because that pill ain't gonna fix you the way becoming the man you wish you were is gonna fix you. And men understand this. They say, "I understand you're the sum of the five people you spend the most time with." Then why are you friends with all these nobodies? Why are you friends with these losers? Why are you doing it then? You're ex then you're accepting what you're gonna be. I love winners. I love winners. Show me a winner. I love winners all day long, my friend. That's who I want to be friends with. Winners. That, that, that's who I want to be friends with. I don't want to be friends with anybody else. I don't see the advantage to it. And that's how I've always created my life and it's served me very, very well. And, and I refuse to accept anything else because negative energy is extremely sticky. If you have friends who are talking negative, try and, try and, try and fix them. It's your duty. 
But if they're sticking to their negative narrative, you don't have a responsibility to them to a degree to sit there and allow them to pollute your life. Because that's what they're going to do. You have to get to a point where it's like, goodbye.